Hello and welcome to the part 4 on signal and system MCQ series. In this video we are going to have uh, solved the 10 questions and these questions are very important and very interesting questions. The details of examination and examination paper has been shared in the last of the video as a screenshot. Further details can be observed in the description. Now let us solve the question number 1. It says the consider the following signals. Signals given are XT, YT and Z of T and we have to comment which of the uh, signals are periodic among these three given signals. So to obtain the periodicity of a continuous time added periodic signals we have to find the individual time ratio and if that ratio is rational we call them signals uh, as a periodic. So for part x of t the t1 value is 2 seconds t2 is 2 seconds this these values can be obtained using this relation omega equals to 2 pi by t so for first signal t1 is equals to 2 second is uh, 1 so if you take the ratio t1 over t2 it will come out to be a 2 over 1 that is a rational number similarly for second signal y of t the t1 is again uh, uh, you can find using 2 pi by t so this value will be pi t2 is 2 pi by 5 and again you if you find the, the ratio of t1 over t2 that ratio is also rational so it means the first two signals are uh, periodic now coming to the third number signal z of t the ratio t1 and t2 this will result in pi which is a irrational number so for question number one the answer is part uh, B, XT and YT are periodic. Moving on to question number 2, we have to find the even part of the given function which is Xn equals to Un plus U of minus N. Now if we plot this signal U of N is a unit step sequence existing from 0 to infinity and having amplitude of 1 and U of minus N can be obtained by taking the mirror image of Un so it will be U of minus N and to obtain the given signal Xn we have to add these signals. So at this point uh, this will be having value of 2 and uh, rest of the signal in towards the positive having value 1 and toward negative also having value 1. Now if you take the mirror image its mirror image will be same so we can say that this x of minus n is following the uh, this property which is of a even component. So for this given signal the option number b is the correct so given signal itself is a periodic signal uh, sorry uh, it is a even signal. For question number 3 this is again related with the periodicity but in this case now the signals given are discrete in nature. So for discrete signal to be periodic what is required the time sequence n has to be integer number and this sequence notation has been changed so now this is omega equals to 2 pi by n and for a small integer of m we have to find the value of capital N. So in the first part omega equals to pi by n so here n comes out to be 14 these are the 14 sequence and uh, for second part this omega 2 is equals to pi by 8 you will find the value of n2 is equals to 16. Now taking the overall uh, signal to be periodic uh, since it is a discrete time so now signal is periodic and overall time period will be obtained by finding the LCM of the 14 and 16. So the LCM of 14 and 16 will result in the value of 112 so signal uh, is a periodic with the time period 112. Next for question number 4 the discrete time input xn and yn output are given and these are given by this relation we have to comment on the linearity, invariance, causality and stability property of the system. Now to test the linearity we apply the additivity test and uh, if you observe this is under root of n xn so when you are given uh, input x1 plus x2 so this will be the output and for individual inputs you will be having n root of uh, root of n x1 and root of n x2 n so these are not equal so system is non-linear. Now because of the term n if you observe here the system is time variant and output is depending on the present value of the input applied so this system will be causal and again the system uh, uh, will be unstable so option c is the correct for question number uh, 4. For question number 5 discrete time LTI system with the input un that produces output delta n then what is the output due to the input n un. So consider that this is our discrete time LTI system and we are giving input as un and we are getting output delta n. So if this is you can observe this relation between un and delta n suppose if I draw the un and a one time shifted signal un minus 1 so delta n will be difference of un minus u of n minus 1 it means the property of system is whatever input we are giving it is taking one time of delay and then subtracting it this is the property of the system. So now in the second case if input given is n un so which is a, a RAM signal so this is your RAM signal so it will be one time shifted so one time shifted means you, you shift it towards the right and then you subtract it you will get this signal. So now this signal is a starting from n equals to 1 and going towards infinity so this becomes the 
uh, equation becomes the u of n minus 1. So question number 5 answer is uh, u of n minus 1 option b. For question number 6 the impulse response of system is given which is delta n delta n plus 2 and delta n minus 2 we have to comment on the causality and stability of system. Now uh, if you observe that H, hn is equals to 0 for n less than 0 then we say that system is causal. So this is not the case in this given impulse response as well uh, uh, the, the system is having only impulse response existing at three different time instances so it will be stable. So system is not causal but it is an example of a stable system. Question number 7 the trigonometric Fourier series of an even function does not have. So when it is an even function it will be it will not be having the sinusoidal term. So this is the option number C is the correct answer for this question. Next question is Fourier transform of a Gaussian pulse. So you always remember that Gaussian pulse is written almost in this form and its Fourier transform is always uh, uh, Gaussian. So Gaussian pulse will always have a Gaussian uh, structure, Gaussian shape in the frequency domain. So option B is correct for question number 8. Next question number 9. In a n point sequence, the capital N is given as 16, the number of complex addition and multiplications using radix 2 FFTR. So uh, this is very uh, formula based question. So for the uh, addition, the number of additions are uh, complex additions are given by n log 2n. So value of n is equals to 16. So this will be 16 log with the base 2. You can write it as a 2 to the power 4. So this value will be 64 and this is 1 by 2 of n log 2n. So this will be 32. So for this question number 9, option B is the correct answer. Next question number 10, 4 point DFT is to be obtained for the given discrete time sequence 1, minus 1, 0 and 2. Now if you if you have seen the previous videos, the same type of question was asked in the uh, previous different examination and we have solved there with another approach. Now we are having a different approach. So since it is a n equals to 4 points, so for all 4 points, you can directly solve using this matrix formula. Now to find the DFT, this is the relation we used and this is known as the Tweedle factor which is e to the power minus j 2 pi over n and n value is 4. Now if you put the value of n is equals to 4 and you find this Tweedle factor value, it will be in the matrix form, it will be having this kind of uh, 4 cross 4 matrix. So this is a easy to memorize, all these values will be 1 and uh, if you observe here it is how you can uh, memorize it, this value is minus j, so here it is minus j, it is plus j you are having plus j minus plus minus and minus 1 and minus 1 so once you practice it you will be able to remember all these values. Now what to do is with the short trick you multiply the given samples over here and uh, when you will multiply with the help of uh, matrix multiplication you will get these output. So for this given question number 10 the option D is the correct. 